Hello everyone, and welcome to the debut of World of Law. If you enjoy the series, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that little bell to be notified when I post again. And if you're only doing so already, check me out on Twitch, Dungeons with Shepard. Link in the description below. Alright, so, uh, we begin our journey in the land of Zim, in the deserts, sands. You all have been gathered here in the location known as the Temple of Judgment, a temple made to the god of law. You are here to meet the Archbishop of this establishment, Archbishop Pocket. To receive further information of the mission that has been bestowed upon you. Groovy. Let's go down the uh, down the list of people. All right, let's see. Uh, Duche, uh, if you would like to introduce yourself, uh, if you have anything that you do, like stream or like music or audio, anything like that, uh, feel free to uh, promote those if you like uh, and introduce you, introduce us to your character. Okay. Um, you see a, a tall, loxodern woman, uh, with white hair, all uh, tied up in a, like, a high bun. Um, earrings on her, uh, simple earrings on her lower lobes of her big, of her ears. She is dressed up in a blue, in a blue coat. With um, blue gloves, and um, she has a wrapping around her around her stomach. Uh, she has what appears to look like uh, like shin guards around her around her uh, around her shins. A nice little pair of uh, like buckle up boots. And particular, she also has are on her eyes a set of goggles with an amber hue to the lenses. Also, chat if the audio does on her sound back, right or anything like that, please let me know. You see what looks like a weird, like metallic, like backpack with all sorts of gadgets and gizmos, and uh, to the side of it. She carries a musket. Looks like to be of a kind of design of what she has made. I really don't have any streaming stuff, but... Uh. I think that's about it as far as my character. I just realized, chat, you can hear all that. Apologies. All right. Uh, Will, hello. Welcome back. Uh, you can introduce yourself once again and your character. <coughs> hello. Well, I'm Will. And in this campaign, I'll be playing Talon Uruquis. Fire Genasi. Uh, he's a fittingly hot headed man. He God, I am never good at this. 
Yeah. It's okay. You only have to do it once. <laughs> oh, not at all. It's completely up to you. Oh boy. He's a He is a firm believer in his own power. Sees things like weapons and armor as crutches that shouldn't be used by anyone. And he's a... Uh, quite frankly, kind of a jackass. But... That's about it. <laughs> I'm going to sense a great dynamic between you and the, uh, and the, uh, the Luxodon. <laughs> right. It's best to me as, as me full of crutches. Alright. <laughs> uh, Michael? Michael? Please introduce us to uh, yourself, if you like, and your character. Hello, I'm uh, Michael from Mars. I don't really have anything to plug, but uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm playing a Mar, a Tabaxi. Who? I mean, we'll reveal things as they go. He's. I don't know what kind of cat that is. Maine Coon. Some kind of fluff. He's some kind of fluff in the desert wearing leather armor. He's having a bad time. But, uh, yeah. That's all you need to know for now. Alright. And, uh, room keeper like to introduce yourself and your character? So, I will be playing Olmec of the Hidden Temple, a Warforged Druid who is playing the subclass uh, Circle of the Forge from Explorers Gu uh, Exploring Eberron. Uh, it's a side book written by Keith Baker, creator of the Eberron uh, campaign setting. Uh, so, my particular character uh, is a particularly older, perhaps even ancient, uh, living sentient construct uh, made long ago, created from live wood, stone, adamantine steel, and a soul crystal somewhere inside of his body. Uh, after eventually growing tired of whatever particular role he may have been created for, uh, he went into a force and chilled for a while. Ended up having a tree grow around him, carrying him high into uh, the sky until that particular tree was cut down for lumber. And he was eventually separated from the wood, much to his uh, displeasure. Uh, seeking out purpose in life after that, he eventually came across a temple to the nature pantheon, Gaia, and the other deities of uh Esra's nature pantheon known as the hidden temple it's not you know it, it's hidden but it's not like a secret right like there's signage it's advertised you know they have a gift shop but but it's a gimmick you know they get a waterfall it looks cool so they call it the hidden temple it's a good time they run a game show there sometimes you should check it out anyway so uh Upon doing that, um, after some time, he has been called uh, to some sort of duty from some other uh, holy temple or organization that 
could use a hand from an individual with his particular expertise and particular tune with nature to drive back some sort of evil force. Uh, he is indeed a warforged created from, as I said, live wood, stone, adamantine steel, and uh, a soul crystal. Uh, he has very accentuated eyes. He wears a simple knit wool cap. He wears a cloak made from various lichens and mosses. Uh, he has a simple hide vest, open chest, uh, some mixture of hide, lichen, some other bizarre materials for his gloves and uh, his uh, pants, as well as you know some good old leather boots with you know various straps and funky natural materials. That's my guy. Excellent. All right. Uh, so you have all made your way to this uh, temple known as the Temple of Judgment through your various travels. And this is where we begin our journey with you all finally entering the temple in search of Archbishop Bucket who you have been informed is somewhere in this uh, structure. As you enter this building made of stone and marble, which now that I say that out loud is a little, you know, because my wheels are stone. Anywho, uh, you see the building is uh, lively. Uh, various church goers and worshippers going about their daily uh, lives, doing their daily duties. Uh, occasionally, you'll hear the slamming of what sounds like a hard object against a wooden table and a room will be vacated of various individuals some of them in chains some of them not and then more individuals will go inside and after so long the process repeats itself many people don't pay you any mind most just seem to be going around you, trying to mind their own business, and going about their lives. Okay. So, can I... So this is like a, a temple structure we're here to meet a bishop you said at, right? Yes. May I make a religion check to determine where he would likely be based on the construction of this temple, being that I am of the acolyte background. Yeah, you could, you could uh, do that, yeah. Uh, also, uh, so for the most part, while I'm looking at Meltos, I'm just going to call you by your character name, because that's what I can see in front of me. Uh, Hell yeah, I got a fucking so. five, by the way. Pong. Yeah! So, uh, Amal, uh, that is how you say your character's name, right? Hello, Olmec. Yeah, Olmec, like the like the from the game show. Oh, I was, oh. I was I'm talking about Amar because he's. I see him trying to oh, do something. Oh, Amar. Yes, Amar. Uh, so, are you trying to spin? Because I can show you how to do that. I was trying to spin. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, also flip. Yes, to do that. Oh, flip. Flip is easy. Uh, I for, I forgot there was a hotkey. Uh, you can go into double click your token. Go into config. I'm low, so. If you try to do anything, it'll fuck you up. But if you select top down where it says shape, that'll let you move. My bad, I forgot to set that fucking toggle. Uh, is F fine. is the hotkey to uh, flip your token. Uh, I will say, uh, when you spin, try to be do that sparingly and slowly, because I have to load every single one of those, and sometimes it crashes over. I will melt your computer. You probably will. Alright, so, with a five, uh... 
I have no idea, probably. I uh, imagine. being a uh, an individual from a different landscape almost entirely, uh, and to a god that is mostly not tied to this religion in any way, shape, or form, the building, the way it's structured, does not look like any temple you have ever seen. Uh, the fact that there are so many people here that seem to be doing business rather than worship uh, baffles your mind. Baffle, not baffle. Baffle isn't a word. So while I'm trying to ascertain that, if anyone wants to make any other attempts, perhaps, whatever. Uh, are we um free to move around? <laughs> yeah, you're free to move around, do whatever you want. Um, I will say, uh, not every character has a token, uh, because that would just make the game unplayable, because it would slow everything down. Uh, so just because you don't see people doesn't mean there's not people there. So if you want to be like, hey, is there someone here? I'll tell you yes or no, and then you can be like, hey, I want to talk to this person. I'll be like, sure, do it. Okay. But yeah, so the map is free for you to move around as you like. You can go wherever you want. All right, so... Um. Uh, you come around this corner and you open the doors and inside you see uh, there are several people in the uh, the pews next to you. There was four individuals at the uh, the tables in the chairs and the uh, the chairs on either side are currently filled with individuals and there is a single individual at the table across from you who is listening to them speak the two people and the uh, tables between you and them. Does it... I mean, I I can make an assumption, but this is a legal battle? Uh, from the sounds of it, that is what it seems to be. It sounds like uh, the individuals who, in, who are in this table are currently trying to uh, get the uh, the individual who seems to be on trial for this scenario uh, not out of trouble as it seems that he is a little too in deep but they are trying to negotiate uh, kind of a settlement to reduce his sentence which is currently uh, 50 years in prison Hmm. How full up is the the whole thing? Uh, the the two the two the pews next to you are f fairly full, not by much. Uh, those seating and no one seems to be paying you much mind. Uh, occasionally, someone gives you a glance, uh, not really knowing who you are, but not really questioning if you belong here or not. Hmm. Well, I'm going to cause problems on purpose. Oh, okay. But uh, if you want to carry on with everyone else, why think of a way to carry? Please. Okay. Why you think of how to fuck shit up? What does everyone else do? Sukiya. Oh. Sukiya right now is just wandering around. Admiring the architecture, being as that of a of from Luxodon. Luxodon's happen to be, for the most part, uh, great stone carvers. So she's currently right now marveling at the the stonework of the temple. Like, oh by Joe, this is fascinating. I haven't seen anything this wonderful since I left my house. She's just, she's just walking around. Uh, and you enter that, the next room? Oh no, that's all yeah. I'm looking at all that. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, so I was going to go into that room once he, once everyone else figures that out. Uh, I did want to ask a question. What was the bishop's name again? Uh, Bucket. Bishop Bucket? Bucket. B-O-C. B-O-K-E-T. 
Mr. Buck. The Bucket All is right. funny. So if you want to call him Bucket, so, you can. Has it? Has everyone else done something here? Cause I got, I got some shit I want to fucking do. Everyone else has done something. I think I think I'm just gonna follow where everybody else is going now. Okay, so uh, oh. you see Omac going in one direction, and you see Amal going in a different direction, both going into separate rooms. We've immediately split the party. Immediately, not even yeah. like a full minute in. Well, we're thirty minutes, thirty-one minutes in actually. But you know, is is there anything going on in this other service room? Uh, yes, as you enter that room. Uh, the room, for now, is actually empty, as it was just vacated. But you do see an individual uh, across from you sitting in one of these, uh, the larger benches, uh, who seems to be doing some sort of paperwork at the moment. You see a... Uh, <clears throat> you see what appears to be an uh, elven man, uh, late in age... Uh, gowns, uh, big, white, curly, puffy hair that doesn't look real at all. All right. So, I'm going to approach him, and I'm going to be like, Excuse me, Fleshly. I see the meatbag uh, Bishop Bucket. As you enter and uh, speak to the individual, they will slowly look up uh, as they are writing. I know of the individual you speak. Ah, excellent. Could you perhaps bring us, me, my uh, associates to? We, we, we came here, uh, apparently we were summoned here to meet this... Uh, this fleshly? Do you have a name? I am Olmec of the Hidden Temple. Ah, yes. You are summoned. Uh, you say your compatriots are here as well, yes? Uh, somewhere around this temple, uh, they uh, went off in search of you as, or in search of him as well. Somewhere. Hmm. Very well. I can show you to him. Ah, excellent. And uh, they will stand and make their way down after gathering their papers and organizing them. Uh, as they stand, they pick up a large staff that has what looks like a javelin at the end of it and begin making their way down. I follow. Yes, cover me. Well, pretty much Olmec is the assassin droid from Knights of the Old Republic. <laughs> Why? Well, but something like that. Him. He's he, he's he's got he's got a little bit of jadedness towards um Anyone the sentient the, the the sentient squishy races. They cut down his tree. He's still kind of mad about it. Alright, so, uh, you two exit. Uh, Amar, you figured it out yet? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So, I'm just going to be standing there and wait for an opening line about... Uh, well, actually, I've been standing for a little bit. Can I yeah. get the gist of what this trial is about? What he do that deserved 50 years? Ah, yes. <clears throat> Apologies. Uh, since you have been standing here listening to basically the back and forth, it appears that this individual has uh, accused of. Uh, I hope this is the correct one. Adultery? Is that the right word? When you find uh, If you mean he slept like, with somebody else than his spouse? Yes. I think so. Yes, yes, adultery of a high member of society. As in that he was married to a high person and cheated on them? Or he slept with somebody that was cheating? I'm sorry. Uh, no, 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 you're fine. Um, 
After listening to the uh, affairs, it appears that this man has been charged with adultery uh, in the case of sleeping with the mayor's wife and uh, tricking her into running off with him and stealing half of the mayor's possessions. All right, all right, good hustle, good hustle. So adultery wasn't really the uh, the cause of 50 years. It was the theft of half of everything the uh, mayor owned. Permission to approach the bench. Sorry. Permission to approach the bench. You don't have to do that, don't worry. Okay. I, I think that actually lags out the solo sometimes, so it's fine. Okay. Uh, the individual across from you will look at you with a little steely gaze seems you've already approached yes it was a rhetorical question anyway hello good day yes so uh, I was listening very intriguing stuff for this sort of meaningless ju ju judicial process anyway I would like to run an experiment As you speak, everyone's kind of looking at you in a little bit of confusion, a little bit of curiosity. An experiment for what? Well, quite frankly, the legal system and various coded laws are... stifling to the creative process and in sciences, in social engineering. So I would like to jumpstart it with a new trial and a new set of punishments and verdicts and criteria. <laughs> For which reason? Well, it's like my old teacher used to say. You never know if what you're doing is the best possible thing you could be doing if you don't try something new. What if we could find a more equitable solution for all parties involved if we exchanged our current methods for a new method. There is no better time in trial than in the real world application. Do you speak for the um, are you do you speak for the defendant? Are you part of his uh defending staff? No he's not Well I am a representative of my uh, instructor, but besides that, no, sir. I'm a free agent. He looks to the end of, to the defendant, who kind of looks back at him and goes, oh, "Sure." Very well. Do you have credentials, paperwork? Can you? Uh now, this is Mars talking. Let me check my kit. I'm pretty sure I have some proof that I went to a closeted scholarly mage guild. It's not the proof he wants, but it's the proof I'm going to present. I think Sufia is going to look over at the other end and see the other two gathering around this man, so I am going to head over that way, too. Okay, while you look for that, we'll catch up with you guys. <clears throat> All right, so uh, old Mac, you walk out with this individual who you have. Let's just say that you have procured. Uh, and your Indeed. other two compatriots come out to meet you. Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I wave to him. Hello, fresh, uh, fleshing friends. So this is the other two compatriots. Uh, yes, I do believe we had one more, some, somewhere. They're they're over in the courthouse. Oh, <laughs> one of the court chambers. Yes. Are they spectating uh, that individual's code in session? 
more like uh, actively trying to get involved. Interesting. Well, well, up to see what he can do. And he goes on following, and he takes a seat, and motions you all to come in. Whispers. So I did find that I have uh, robes from my cloistered scholar uh, background that I imagine would look like a uniform from the Mages Guild. Mm -hmm. So I'll just kind of do a twirl, give it a flare. Uh, yes, hi. I am a certified scholar from the Tides End Mage Guild. Hello, how are you? May the experiment begin. At, at this time, the rest of your compatriots and the other individuals walked in, and the uh, the judge, mean? basically, that you were speaking to, kind of takes notice and looks at you and looks at him and looks at you and looks at him, and he gives a nod. Wonderful. Splendid. Very well. Continue. Excellent. Now, what would the normal punishment for this case be? If it were to go to the worst possible outcome. Murder, banishment, 50 years in jail, uh, so on and so forth. If it was going to be the maximum penalty, it would be 50 years in prison. Walking in the, in the mines. It's compensation. Ah, free labor. Understandable. So, uh, that's a bit tired, pedantic. It also hurts civilization as a whole due to the fact that we are taking jobs away from the economy. Now, counterpoint, theorem, if you will, what if we simply set him for community service? Door to door. Return every single thing that was stolen by hand with a heartfelt apology that lasts a minimum of half an hour to those uh, wronged in this case. Which, to be quite frankly, doesn't really sound for the most part like there were serious wrongs other than stealing from a mayor. Eh. It's possible to steal from politicians. They're all criminals anyway. Make Olmec's a, liter or, make or go ahead, go ahead do that. Alright. <clears throat> Olmec is literally just turning to the bishop. <laughs> Two. Well, at least it's not that one. Yeah, personal opinions of monarchies and royalty aside. Thievery is thievery. And the punishment for anyone who would thieve is the same. Your proposal, while intriguing, Would need several approvals, documentation, and experimentation. And I have been listening to this scenario for quite some time. I've 
listen to this defendant's testimonies as well as the testimonies of others and I have come to the conclusion that a simple apology that lasts 30 minutes is no so much helpful as it is heartfelt. Now, while that punishment, quotations, may not be sufficient for this extenuating circumstance, I would oblige you to seek out other members of our system and implore them to go about this experiment that you seem so adamant about. Ah, I see. My, my Discord did that thing where I can't hear what you're saying. Hmm. For a moment. Okay, talk again. Well, it seems this experiment has ended in a failure. Ah. But I will not be disheartened. I will just leave and do the mental math on how 50 years in an interned imprisonment robs the economy of this local city. Good day! Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know how much of that you actually said, and how much you were interrupt. Oh, well, not interrupting, but trying to speak. Because my Discord uh, did a weird thing where I can't hear you. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, my did you Discord catch that last bit. My, I did catch that last bit because I left and I came back, and that fixes it. Sometimes okay. it does a weird thing where it just cuts off other people talking. I don't know why. It's new. Something that's relatively that's new that's happened. So yeah. So, I think y'all can could still hear me, but I can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, so you did catch everything? Were you saying anything during any of that that I should hear? Oh, well, that do, because chat can't hear you either. Uh, so, Amar, repeat what you were saying. Oh, okay. I did catch the very last bit that you said where you... Sorry, I, I wasn't after. clear how much of it... Yeah, anyway. I didn't hear anything through all that. Okay, so uh, I'll say, well, I won't be disheartened. Science waits for no entity. Uh, I'll carry on. I would just recommend thinking of the mental math of feeding, clothing, and sheltering somebody, even though they're doing manual labor, which robs a job of a citizen. Uh, good day. So, uh, Olmec would like to raise his hand and be like, uh, excuse me, what precisely are the charges again? against this individual. Like, charges, I know the player, but, yeah, but yeah. Olmec doesn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the charges are adultery and thievery of the highest degree. Olmec's gonna cock his hand. He's like, The concept of adultery is quite foolish, don't you think? As a concept, I would say it's not. not the purpose, as it's I not am... the purpose of your flesh of you fleshings to reproduce. Is it not the natural order of things? Everyone's purpose is different. Procreation is not on everyone's highest priority. While the act of repopulating or populating is not illegal. The act of seducing another's chosen individual, equally chosen individual, and then twisting that individual's mindset To take 
steal someone else's hard earned belongings. As well define as the nature. And size. Could you perhaps define the nature of this stealing? Was it perhaps, from the way you describe it, the individual that was supposedly seduced gave these materials to this individual? From her testimony, no. As she was misled. And it was not her ideal to steal from the mayor. But she was twisted into believing that she had the rights to those belongings when in fact she did not own them. My judgment has been so that she is not the one who is being judged. I'm just sitting in my I'm just sitting in my feet with a piece of metal just scribing on it. Just. Who's being judged if I may ask as a, as a player? So the lady seduced the mayor, or the mayor seduced the lady. Neither. Neither. The woman was married to the mayor. The man, who was the one who was being judged, who you can't see because he doesn't have a token because he's not really worth it, or wasn't meant to be, uh, is the one being judged because he seduced the mayor's wife, tricked her into taking a large sum of money or gold or whatever have you, or possessions, with her, of which he took. By force? Well. Or did, did she just give them to him? No, That's the question. No, not by... Oh, oh my god, we've actually gone to light loyal. Uh, no, not by force. Uh, <laughs> okay, so have you ever watched... Uh, what, what the fuck is it called? Uh, that Tim Bowden movie? Corpse Bride? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, long time ago. Corpse Bride? Yes. Yes, yeah. That kind of scenario, only the woman doesn't die. Okay, yeah, so pretty much he, st he stole from her. You know, she had the possessions in with her. They were still considered her and the mayor's possession. And so he took them by force. So. Yeah, I yeah, suppose it would be force on the kind of using you. Okay. Well, not so much physical force as much as, like, mental, I trick you and now I have your stuff and you don't have it no more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Olmex Quentin says, It sounds to me like the. The lady is the one who had an oath that she broke, whereas the other individual is also a manipulative jerk. Punish both? You fleshlings are weird. I'm out. I'm just not I'm gonna to walk me. out. I'm like, you know what? You fucking fleshling people fucking make no sense. <laughs> you like Kanye West of that trial. Fucking breathers. <laughs> Amazing. And with that, I'm like a the, uh, group of people. And with that, the uh, the uh, other individual who brought you in stands up, nods at the uh, the judge to continue, and motions you all to follow him as he leaves as well. Okay. Well, that was interesting. Ah, it could have been more interesting. Think I've learned a lot about you. 
Four. Oh, yes. I am supposed to take you, Dodge Bishop Bucket. Yes. Bucket. Oh, who, who is the Temple of Judgment if, well, what, what god? Ah, this is the Temple of Judgment. Temple made to represent the teachings and administer uh, judgings in the name of Pencle. God of law. Oh, yes. Let me take you to Archbishop Bucket. Congratulations, you have been brought to Archbishop Bucket. Hello. 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 Greetings and salutations. Greetings, Breather Bishop. I think hello suffices, so I'll just say hello again. Hello. No. That was quite the display. Well, and the experiment results in failure, which you hate to see, but at the end of the day, we can't learn anything without failures. Uh, <laughs> is it a failure, or was it just going about the wrong way? I'm not going to cock my hand and be like, I think you're all insane. Shrug. Well, in, at least insanity is interesting. Uh, so, I was told there was a source of valuable information that was being held by some people that are societally accepted to be terminated. Potentially. Excellent. Let's not speak about that here. Come. Go to a more private area. Back to my chambers. You all, as you have said, have been told that to arrange here for more information about what it is that we have all described to be your duties. There is a potential call. Two of our more field members have heard word of potential meetings that would defy law and in the very matter defy good. Do not know much about them, only that there is a potential that they worship demons, beings of chaos. Their mere existence goes against the teachings of Pinnacle. We cannot abide by that. We have heard that. Uh, there's a potential meeting to be had within the very city. Do not know where. Do not know when. But we know that a lot of information comes from a certain tavern. There's also an inn. That potentially, few of the patrons are part of this court. 
They tend to speak loudly. Drunk. So that is where we will send you first. To the Tavern and Inn, known as the Gilded Dragon. Uh, I'm going to cock my head a bit and be like, very well, um, I may perhaps suggest a minor uh, detour before we head there. I might have some contacts that we might want to uh, contact first before we go anywhere. At that point, I'm going to start ritual casting, locate animals or plants. And I'm looking for the largest concentration of cats in this town. There's got to be like a big uh, cloud of just like feral cats or like stray cats chilling somewhere in this town. So I'm looking for like where the alley cats are hanging out. Okay. Uh, as you begin to do that, uh, ritual casting your spell, uh, the Archbishop waits uh, and you do pick up a fairly larger than average uh, sense of cats on the uh, <clears throat> the eastern portion of town alright that's 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 my that's, that's my stop right before we hit up the tavern Roughly, uh, roughly a mile, two miles out. Two miles out from the tavern? No, from where you currently are. Oh, dope! Nice. Yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna lean to my contacts. Oh, that's you're just gonna be me. a bunch of, bunch of cats. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Go forth and be my eyes amongst the city. You, you are all Mac, correct? That is correct. Ah, yes. You notified us earlier of some equipment you may have wanted and sent us your, uh, your payment earlier. That is correct. Uh, for support. He will not. He will move around and reach under uh, here and pull out a large sack. Uh, yeah, this should be all of the equipment that you wished to obtain. He will hand the, uh, the sack with all of the equipment uh, that you sent me out of character. I, I'm appropriately uh, distributing that amongst my person via backpack and equipment slots and sack slots and so on. It's already on my character token, so it's all good. <laughs> oh. Oh. 128 pounds, so I'm good. The tavern that you are being sent to inspect is just north of here. easily find it as it is one of the more prominent establishments. Very well. We need... Onward for science. Do we need to do we need to uh report back here after the tavern or do we just go ahead and try to take these guys out? If you would like to report to us you may do so. That would be beneficial to us as well to know of any information that you may have gathered. However, if time deems essential, go forth and do what you must. 
Very well, very well. Onward for the Blue Bond Guild. And science. And that too. It's for science! <clears throat> so, uh, as I lead him to the cat clouder, the big ass water cats, I'm gonna also ritual cast speak with animals. Okay. Uh -oh. And I want to approach this fat gang of cats. And be uh, like... Oh, go, go, go. Yeah. So here, here. Will, was there anything you wanted to do before we leave yeah. this place? I, I wanted to greet them. Well, not leaving no, this Will. place. Yeah, Will. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm asking Will if there was anything he wanted yeah. to do. Uh, not yet. Okay. All right, so... All right, so. Uh, you make your way out of the temple... Begin heading east toward this uh, area where you have located your feline friends. The non forbidden temple. Yes, the non hidden temple. That's right. Hmm. Uh, as you uh, go, uh, the streaks become. A little less nicer than usual. You appear to be headed into the slum areas. Uh, and as you continue on, uh, roughly the two miles it takes you to reach this location, uh, you are just outside of a gated area that appears to have a large accumulation of uh, trash and other city debris. You appear, and lots of cats. You appear to be just outside of a junkyard. No cats to the naked eye. Ah, this is well, where you... Uh, your spell track them down to. Alright. So having cast... Uh, I'm going to ritual cast speak with animals. And I'm going to call it... Hello, stalwart warriors! Hail and well met! In, in cat, of course. And I'm like, come forth. I have a great bounty for you. And I'm going to bust out my dried fish. My five pounds of dried fish. I'm going to bust out quarter pound. And, and, and just bust it out. And I'd be like, I wish to hire your services. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait and see what happens. Okay, I'm so... I'm going to stare at them, but then look at the tabaxi like, what the heck are you, are you doing? Oh, no, that isn't language, that's just gibberish. I know, but I'm still looking at like, what the heck are you doing? Wait, are you looking at the tabaxi or the golem? He's, he's looking at me, the Warforge. Oh. Uh, I think that might be some confusion on who was doing what. Yeah, there was. Yeah, yeah. So the war forces are one of you speaking cat right now, going meow 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 meow. But in his head, it's, it's sounding like that. I can just imagine his voice is just open. And it is just a recording of cat noises. <laughs> it's that's exactly what's going on right now. <laughs> as far as you could tell, it's exactly what's happening. It's just an old mixtape of cat cat recordings. Uh, yeah. Oh, the artificer's gonna love the Warforge. Okay. Don't worry, I can repair you. Uh, Did you cut? So, so. <clears throat> as you're outside of this gated area, uh, you hold out the the uh, the fish and uh, speak and cat. Uh, and after not long couple of seconds or so you, know, you see uh, a few uh, uh, a few eyes begin to peer out from the various trash pits in your direction uh, they, they do seem to have taken notice of the fish and of you but they look very skittish 
I will cast animal friendship uh, and charm them with my animal friendship spell. Ba bam. Okay. Alright. Uh, so you can target uh, one with this, which could be enough. <clears throat> There's a wisdom to say if you see. So let me let me row for a cat to see if it if it's see. Let's go! Does that just, just happen? I'm seeing the DC though. That might be wrong. Unless you up it up. Is this one you made? Or is this one you grabbed? What that? Was that? Oh, oh that is... I didn't though. adjust it. Hold on a sec. I may have hit the okay, wrong so one. It must have seen it was the So it does have to make a save. It doesn't just happen. Okay, cool. Yeah, but it's uh, it's higher than a DC 12. It should be a DC of 15. Uh... Let me see if you... That particular macro actually had int instead of uh, wisdom. I can fix it. Really? Use the int? That's weird. It, it has int as default for some reason? That is on, that. like, yeah, all that's weird. That's... spells. They probably copy-pasted it from wizard. So check it out. Like, if I do it again... That... Hey. That spellbook shouldn't I have it. that. As all that. Did you use the... Uh... Dude, yep. Use the druid one and it's still using intelligence? That's weird. It, it, it definitely use the druid one. Uh, it shouldn't. Oh, that's weird. I've never seen that happen. I don't know why it did that. I've been adjusting them as I go, but I forgot to fix that one. I don't remember yeah. why I look up the wisdom of a cat. I'm pretty sure it's got a negative somewhere. Probably uh, negative one. Uh, no, it might have a positive. Uh, well, it's wisdom, not int, so they yeah, might have... Oh, they do. Look at that. It's a plus one. I was gonna say they might they might have a little bit because they got the you know the perception and all that they got that smell. Uh, th wow, close, but no, it uh, it does fail. So it appears <clears throat> as you look at one of these cats and begin weaving your magics to uh, make it docile towards you, uh, charmed by you. Right. It, it seems to take effect as this this one this. Big, fat, round, uh, matted fur cat begins to just wall out quickly towards the uh, the fish that is in front of it. And, and I'll be like, all right. Hello, great warrior. I require services from you and your friends. Do not fear. I am willing to pay well. Uh, this is but a mere... Uh, upfront payment to show you that I am serious. I will willing to offer you three pounds of dried fish should you accomplish the task I ask. Uh, the cat on the other side of the fence now kind of just clawing trying to like climb its way up with its stumpy fat little legs. Kind of looking at you. How much fish you got? What do you want to know? I'm looking for strange figures that are hoping to worship demons or other ill things within the city. You get around. I'm sure you can smell the vileness of such infernal creatures with your keen senses. Find out where they are. Tell me where they store their food and water. Where they meet. And you will have a vast bounty of fish. I am willing to offer three pounds split between any team that can bring me the information I desire. Round up your compatriots, as many as you wish. Put out the word. If you end up simply recruiting a team to accomplish this task for you amongst your compatriots, I will reward them as well as you 
I will give you a half pound finder's fee in addition to paying this team. What say you? Will you put out the word of this vast bounty? Surely you are no coward. No, 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 no. I ain't no coward. No, no. Currently just <laughs> staring at the fish. No, 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 no. Uh, and, and of course, the upfront payment. I'm going to no. give him that quarter uh, pound I already pulled out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, just put it to the fence. I'm going to do that. <laughs> and of course, the vast bounty animals. And all you have to do yeah, yeah. is sit around. That's probably, yeah. Find these bizarre oh. individuals, and perhaps you already know where they are. Yeah, perhaps just... that quarter pound of fish refreshed your memory. Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Memories fresh. Yep. Demons. Mm. Yeah. Food and water. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I know about demons, yeah. Yeah, I know about demons. Yeah. They live... They live just south of here. They really give us a hard time. Ah, excellent. Just yeah. what I was looking yeah. to learn about. Uh, they chase us around. Down. Sometimes we bite our tails. So, we will eliminate these demons troubling you and reward yeah. you vastly. All you need to do is tell us where they live. All right, yeah, yeah, I can do that, yeah. <laughs> they live in a, they live in a back alley, just south of here. It's a good back alley too. There's like a restaurant that throws up pasta every now and again. Me and the boys can never get it because we're chased off. He's like, excellent, excellent. Uh, and would I be able to determine exactly what restaurant this would be, or should I have one of these cats lead me there in order to determine this? Like, what does what my character get a sense of out of this? Uh, you could probably find it, but, you know, if you want to ask, just, you know. Just to make sure you know where it's at, you know. That's a, yeah. I'm, could always do that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say, if you could be so kind as just show me approximately where it's at, I will uh, pay you appropriate. Half now, half later. A reasonable uh, offer. Indeed, I set up that half, and I offer it to him. Uh, you you lay out half of the fish, and it just dives in and begins feasting on it. And eventually, some of the other cats rush in, and they all begin eating. And within within minutes, the fish is just gone. I'm going to start making notes in a book. Oh, that was good. Ah, that was good fish. And, 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 like, of course, since I'll be paying you once we arrive at our destination, the other half, which I will put in this extra sack I happened to recently acquire, I will tie it around your neck. Wow. He begins to like just roll on his back until it eventually writes itself up. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's go! And it begins just plopping, and it hits the fence. Oh yeah! Plopping. <laughs> 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 
like, like, I'm like, do you require um, assistance? Oh, no, I got this. Got it plenty of time before. I'm gonna use my tabaxi climbing feature to get over the fence. Uh, you you easily get over the fence. I'm going to climb over the fence. Uh, you you begin climbing over at on the fence, and uh, your weight kind of pulls the fence down a little bit, as it's just a chain link fence. Oh. It, it is is well. Hold on a second. Is the fence? Is the other side of the fence towards the south, or not towards the south? Do we want to be on the other side of the fence, or do we want the cat? The cat, the on cat the was on the opposite side of the fence. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is, do we want to be on the opposite side to follow the cat? I mean, the cat there? is trying to get out of the fence. It doesn't particularly matter side. now. The cat, fence, cat the is, fence cat is, is now... trying to get out of the fence. I think we need to move the fucking or get the fucking cat through the fence. Well, the cat, cat is halfway up. I don't, I, I don't think we need to. It is now a horizontal fence thanks to our elephant friend. Ah, right. okay, it's not that bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to do what I can to assist the cat up the fence. I'm assuming, hopefully, that my associates are also helping the cat make the climb. Oh no, I'm just taking notes. And, and I will be, I will be letting know, like, like, this is this, this is now this is my my contact. He will he will actually lead us to where these demons are are located. Okay, with your help, eventually the cat makes it over the fence. And plops down. Uh, meanwhile, I'm uh, a, I'm a, I'm a what's that? I'm a... What's that? Taken. So I'm gonna whip out my musket. Okay. Yeah. Right. Then let's go get him. Mainly, I'm gonna use it like as a walkie stick kind of deal. And like, we we are simply only gonna find out where they're at. We're going to want to find more information. F- First, at the tavern, but this will tell us exactly their location. All Doubtful, right. but let's continue. All right, let's do this. Let's continue on. Okay, I'll put it up. Whatever. The cat just begins to strut south. I'm, I'm falling. Very slowly. Very fat cat. It's more of a waddle. And That's a strut. It's more of a waddle. Waddle, 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 waddle. Alright. So you all follow this cat south. And eventually it leads you to uh, this little rundown side of town uh, with this uh, fragrant smell of pasta kind of fills the air as a small little shop, little pasta shop is set up. And the cat stops about 20 feet away. They live in that alleyway. Uh, I'm, I'm going to turn to my computer back. My contact says they live in this alleyway over here. Make a note of it. Make a note of it. Actually, I'm going to... Keep, I'm going to actually... Oh my so... I'm gonna kneel down and be like, "Hello, new me. Excellent, my friend. Here's your payment. And What's I the want story? You pay him that fish, and then what I'm going to do is my my mouth is going to open up and kind of arch back, and I'm going to use the wild companion feature from um." From, from uh, Tasha's, and use one of my wild shaped slots to uh, summon a fucking bat. And I'm gonna have that bat, which uh, it works kind of like Find Familiar, but it lasts for one hour. And I'm gonna use that bat and be like, alright, Echo, that bat's gonna fucking literally fly out of my fucking mouth. 
head's gonna like you know go back or close back up i'm just gonna screech at it and i'm gonna be telling it oh um, uh you using summon beast a wild companion a wild companion okay as an action, you can expend a use of your wild shape feature to uh, cast a fine familiar spell without material components. When you cast a spell in this way, the familiar is a fade instead of a beast, and the familiar disappears after one hour. Right. Um, yep, you can do that. So I'm going to have uh, use wild companion to have that bat go into that alleyway and just investigate everything you can find any cracks or shit you can squeeze through because he's just a fucking tiny little bat he's a tiny creature mm -hmm. and he's a fey bat mm -hmm. and i'm gonna have him do that as, uh with fine familiar i could share his senses and he's got blind sight so i can see in the dark with that echo screechy shit see all the hidden things all right uh roll me a perception check as a bat as a bat as a bat well, unless you're using your senses. So uh, that be, no, this would yours. definitely be the bat definitely senses the bat. in this case. It's okay. the bat that's. I'm seeing through the bat's eyes. He has a perception score of plus one. I think I just uh, chat roll. I can I? Yeah, you can do it in the chat roll if you don't have the token and all that. So yeah. Do ghetto stuff. Oh, natural twenty. Look at that. I mean, all right. So twenty-one with the bat. All right. Uh, hello. Hello, one of me. Welcome. Uh, the story. Uh, the story. Uh, right now is that what does they, my have been hired, they have been hired named uh, by Echo. the Church of see, Pinnacle. What does Echo see? By the Church of Pinnacle to hunt down a group of cultists uh, my little who are worshiping demons. For the next hour. And, and I am the DM. Yes. Uh, so I probably won't be able to respond much as I am having to listen to them and respond to them. But welcome. I hope you enjoy. Uh, yes. I'm so, gonna look at, go for it. Go. Yeah. I'm looking at the Warforged as he's opening his mouth and spewing out a bat. That's like. I thought Warforges didn't, didn't eat anything. What the hell? Common misconception. Don't worry. I'm sure he's full of bats. I, 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 I just cock my head at him and go, affordable housing. <laughs> All right, so uh, as... that... no, go for it, go for it. no, go. I'll be like, uh, uh, like one of those. Uh, I can't argue with that. I guess that makes sense. Okay, go it, ahead. It's literally a mobile home. <laughs> it's a mobile home for animals. I'm guessing. Yeah. He's okay. part tree. Well, yeah, when, I, when you said you were part tree, I didn't think that you meant you were uh, part tree. Oh, literally, actually, all Warforged are part tree. They're made from live wood, which is a type of wood that remains living and growing even after it is separated from its original tree. That's the official law, anyway. I kind of Eberron make Pax. it. Yeah, that's that's the official law. I I go with whatever you want because I personally I don't care that much. Do whatever you want with your character, flavor wise. But that's the official law. Uh, there you go. My law, I don't really care. Just do whatever you want. I'm cool with it. As long as you're not saying you're like made out of solid gold and you're going to chop yourself up to make gold pieces. Then we might be getting a little trouble, around, but who cares? All right, so uh, with a 21, uh, as your bat flies into this alleyway and begins uh, uh, looking and listening with this echolocation, uh, which I believe actually gives you advantage, but you got a 20, so who cares? Uh, All right. A few things. The alleyway is roughly uh, 30 feet long and about... 10, 15 feet wide. So, pretty decent sized alleyway. Um, there are various uh, trash containers, um, various bits of garbage, and it does actually sense that there are <clears throat> several uh, small creatures laid down to the uh, to the ground. You can actually see it. 
uh, it appears to be uh, several wild, uh, not wild, but uh, several, uh, yeah, wild dogs. Wild dogs? Dogs, woof woofs, city dogs, strays. <laughs> Good start. Those are the devils that they're talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, 100%. There's no way that cat knew anything useful. <laughs> it was worth a shot. Demons to a cat. I'm going to turn to the par and back. It appears the bat has located some demons down the alley. <laughs> And are these demons four-legged? Likely. <laughs> I see, I see. Can they allow uh, the final boss to change? in denial. Right, If they make it that far. Hey, you don't know what the bat's seen. I mean, listen, I knew as soon as you said there were demons near a pasta restaurant and a cat told you <laughs> that it wasn't going to be actual demons. My character's smart. <laughs> I know animals have next to nothing. Like, shall we investigate? Lead on. Uh, we're going down the alley. <laughs> All right, you make your way. Go for it. Listen, let's go down the alley. Uh, you you all make your way across the street uh, to this alley, which is fairly lit up. Uh, there are a little the shadows from the, the buildings kind of blocking the sun. Uh, you can kind of see all the way through. Um, and at the very end, you do see like a glimpse of what looks like a... Uh, uh, a hairy tail just sticking out behind a uh, a container. I'm going to investigate. I'm casting shillelagh. I'm getting it ready. I'm getting ready to bat. Well, I approach this 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 creature. All right, you make your way. I'm going to, I'm going to investigate too. Is somebody else wrong? I'm just gonna follow behind them and uh, write a note on their reactions. <laughs> Will, are you doing anything? Will. Will. Probably go with the Warforged. Where are they? <laughs> go with the Warforged? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So, you and... all make your way in. Uh, as you approach this container, you hear a, a low, grumbling, almost snore like sound. Can I see what it is yet? Uh, as you get closer, you do see that it is a uh, uh, a hairy tail that is kind of matted and uh, missing a good portion of the hair. So it just looks like this pale skin with blind hair kind of growing on it. And, and, I'm, and I'm able to tell it's a dog at this point, especially with the knowledge from the bat. It does look like some sort of mammalian creature. Just from the tail, it's difficult to tell if it's a dog, but it does look like some sort of mammalian creature, if anything. I, 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 I'm going to roll up on it. And I'm just going to try and, like, you know, put my weapon at it. Kind of Batman at it and do an intonation being like, Where are the demons? But right. a dog. <laughs> Alright, you rush outside. Yelling with the demons and the uh, the animal 
jumps up, uh, stopping it snowing, and it is actually like this uh, manged, ridden dog. Uh, and it kind of jumps up and growls, and several other dogs kind of jump up and growl at you as you have made your presence known. I don't think these are demons. These look like just regular canines. A keen, if delayed, observation. Well, I guess if you got a information from a cat, this actually kind of makes a lot more sense. Do they say anything back? Is the uh, question. Currently, they're just growling at you. Uh, taking a kind of a aggressive territorial stance. I'm gonna, throw, I'm gonna uh, can I make an intimidation check and be like, I heard there were demons here. Where are the demons? Yeah, yeah, you can totally do that. Uh, where's intimidation? Here we go. Or would that be animal handling? Uh, I, w I would say this would be intimidation, based on what you're doing. Uh, it sh should be going. Well, for some reason, the macro isn't working, so hold Let on a sec. Let's see. Skill check. Da -da -da. Oh, for me. Thank you. Uh, that's a 16. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working for you. Work for me just fine. Oh, I see you have a whole different size skills down here, which it should work all the same. Oh, maybe, maybe I was clicking yeah. like the wrong yeah, they or both, something. They both work, so I don't know why you couldn't click on them. Could you click on them? Yeah, it's kind of weird. And they just wouldn't pop them out? Yeah, they're not working at the moment. One of my other stuff works. My other stuff works. That's kind of weird. Yeah, that is well. Right, well, 16. Uh, <clears throat> you yell at the uh, at the dog in front of you, um, asking, well, demanding where the demons are, and it kind of just looks at you. It's it's back hunched, baring its teeth. And it, and it kind of just goes, You are the demons! You are the demons, John! Uh, should I roll for existential crisis? If you want. Existential <laughs> crisis! A, a million emotions pass through the War Forge. However, because he was not designed with facial expressions, we'll never know them. Incredible. I guess I guess you could say the wolf would suffer emotional damage. Emotional damage. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I have vulnerability to that. Wisdom <laughs> saving through. I'm going to turn to the party and be like, perhaps the demons all along. We're within ourselves. Wow, that is an interesting hypothesis. Oh, yeah, yeah, the flesh, the fleshies, as you say. Well, that is it. Again. I said, or or in case or in the case of you, us fleshies. Fleshlings. Fleshlings. Breathers. Right. Those are the I mean, interior medium. Can I study the Warforge real quick? See if there's any, like, cracks or anything? Yeah, you could. Uh, what do I, what do I roll for that? Uh, if you're, Perception? like, actively, uh, searching them for, like, any cracks or breaks or anything like that, I, I would say it would be an investigation, uh, cause you're actively searching, uh, for anything like that. <laughs> 
my my first roll, and I believe it is a skill that I am proficient in. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So the snide king smell, so I do not have advantage on this. Seventeen. Yep, seventeen. I I have very high investigation. Uh, I say that that would be sufficient to notice most things that aren't actively uh, hidden very well. Uh, so. Oh, Mac, do you have anything that you're not, like, actively hiding that's, like, an imperfection, like, something broken or anything like that? He doesn't have anything that's broken or looks like a defect. There are some aspects that seem to have almost overgrown and fused into his construction over time, but they don't appear to be any form of damage or decay if anything more of a, a form of natural growth and adaptation uh if if we're going by by the lore rules as written lore forge which is kind of what i'm going with personally um they have no signs of aging whatsoever in fact hell like they get like physically killed technically they're ageless so no no kind of wear and tear or, like no dented bits no uh, bits that may be slightly nope. more rested or anything like that. As long as, as, long as they uh, take well, care well of themselves maintained. in some way, they just, as long as they just take care of themselves, they're fine. Okay. He's well maintained. He's well maintained, so that means I don't have to mend him yet. I've seen if I needed to mend any, like, holes or anything like that, but it's like, huh? So I look him over, it's like, no, you're good for now. I guess in case we get to a scrap and your metal is damaged, I could pretty much be able to mend it up for you. If necessary. You need to be surprised, Fleshly. I can do the same for you. I will have to take your word for it. Until the time comes. So, shall we ask more street animals for leads, or should we follow up on the one we have? Unfortunately, it appears we have reached dead end. Unless we decide to <laughs> slay these dogs. Perhaps we should go to the tavern. To the tavern! Head to the north. So many notes. So many notes. And the cats was worth a shot. I am sure you think that. Anything's worth a shot. <laughs> All right. So uh, you begin to head out this alleyway, uh, and as you do, the the fat cat runs up to you. Did you kill those demons? Like, unfortunately, it appears you have failed. Really? These were not the demons I was looking for. The These demons. were simply dogs. You said demons. No, I was talking more of the actual infernal kind. Smells of brimstone. I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know what that is. Well, if you actually find any uh, further actual information, let me know. Unfortunately, you've rather disappointed me in this case. Okay, I don't care about that. Just give me the fish. I'm afraid you. Uh, I'm afraid now that you've uh, not held up your ear into the bargain. Search out. You find valid like information. Demons. That was demons. I gave you, you valid information. Just give me the fish. I asked you for cultist worshipping demons. You never said that. You just said demons. I don't even oh, know what a cult no, is. No, no, That's no. cult. I. I uh, <laughs> bunch of. You know. I point towards those. Those behind me. Like, see how they had the, the ones that walk on two feet and. Are also made of flesh. The ones that smell real bad, uh, ones like that, but they tend to wear I mean, dark you clothes. Too much fresh for yourself, but sure. Uh, and they, they tend to like you know, wear dark cloaks, and they run around and worship Why? weird devil things that go really? out of the ground and shit. 
They also like to sacrifice goats and weird things like that. And people. Actually, I do. You know what? I know exactly what you're talking about. There's a place full of two-legged things, whatever they are. They just, they chop up goats. And other things, too, they have, like, cows. Sometimes they have horses, fish. No, 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 not, not, not quite like that. They wear, like, these white gowns. You want, I want ones that uh, say weird things and stab things with weird shaped daggers. Yeah, they stab things with weird shaped daggers and they say weird things. We don't even know what they're talking about. But they're not wearing weird robes. I mean, that 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 stuff that they all wear that you're wearing too, kind of like it's just it's weird. It's like the skin, but they can take it off, and then they put it back on. And then they take it off and get it wet and put it, dry it, and then put it on. It's weird. It's like... A... You know what? Fish ain't worth this, and he runs off. Uh, Alright. <laughs> it's not so much a run, as it's more like a waddle. Very well. Oh, like either that or he's coming with me. <laughs> Alright. I think we we're progressing to the tavern last I checked. Alright. Then you you all make your way. Uh towards the tower. Uh, leaving the more of the more impoverished side of the city and headed into what appears to be more of a uh, entertainment district until eventually you come up to a a uh Holy crap, English. You come up to a well-established looking uh, inn and tavern. That appears to be two stories tall. Fairly large. Uh, boisterous ongoings. You hear music going on from inside. And outside is a sign that says the Gilded Tavern. The Gilded Dragon. Not the Gilded Tavern. Gilded Dragon. Gilded Dragon. I'm changing maps. Load it. See if I got my shit. So Alright, nice. I get to make checks now. It works. Okay, so you're loaded in. Well, and Dush, are you two still loading in? Yeah, uh, uh, no, I got it. Okay, you're on. I'm in. I'm in. Oh, it didn't, it didn't change. It didn't change. What the heck? Oh, it changed. I just... I, don't know. I copied you before that. 
Oh, I copied okay. you and pasted you before you did that, so that's why that wasn't different. Oh, okay. I was like, I just, okay. Alright. Uh, you are currently standing outside the establishment, the inn and tavern known as the Gilded Dragon. You wish. I'm looking to my computer. Like, shall we enter? Yes. I only see the roof, though. Not for long. Ha <laughs> ha. Right, uh, you enter in the. Uh, and appears to be lively. Uh, there are many uh, guests drinking, chatting, listening to music. Uh, there was a band currently going. Uh, uh, and do I still have Echo with me? Uh, how long does he last? An hour. I'd say you still have him for about 20, 20 more minutes. And I just kind of subtly release him up into the rafters of this bar so he can just kind of hang around and, like, listen to people's tables, like, way up in the rafters. Uh, subtly? Yeah, yeah he's, he's yeah. kind of trying to, Yeah, you, you can know. try. Uh, have it roll a stealth check for it. So you think uh, could... uh, uh, A bat stealth check. Let's see what this guy's yeah. got for stealth. Um, ooh, plus two. Does it have a stealth bonus? Yeah, well, he's got plus two to dex, so. Yeah, plus two to dex doesn't have doesn't have proficiency in stealth. Probably not, but you know. You no, know. no proficiency. No. He's a bat. Never know. Five. Five. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you you send your bat up to the rafters, but it kind of just flaps. A few people kind of look at it like, who let this damn bird in here? But it just makes its way up to the rafters and kind of settles in, but no one really seems to mind other than a few people looking at it, pointing it out like, there's a fucking bird in here, because it's upside down, so nice. it's weird, so. So, I'm going to uh, everyone do whatever else, but I'm trying to listen to all these tables and see if I pick up on anything about cults or... Any weird shit, any anything of interest, mm -hmm. using his echolocation super bat hearing, like you know, what's this guy you know fucking saying? What's that guy saying? You know, I'm listening in. I'm going. To, I think I am going to use my keen smell to smell of anything of like brimstone or ashy or anything out of the ordinary. Okay. Since I'm using my keen smell, I have, I have advantage on that. Yep, so if you're going to, uh, like, listen out or try to see for anyone who looks suspicious, uh, you can make uh, perception checks to see if you notice or hear anything. Well, that would just uh, uh, still be noticing, but yeah. I guess I should have a... do a bat perception check while I'm at it. Uh, yeah, if you're listening, if you're using your bat to listen, if you like to also listen as well, you may do so. Because uh, it is your familiar, you two can speak, I believe, telepathically, so you, you can actually. Yes. Yeah, and I can like hear through his ears and shit like that. Uh, yeah, so if you're, if you're going to like, bat. yeah, so if you want to like listen through its ears, it will just be one check for the bat. Yep. And he's got a plus one to whiz, so that's a 17 for uh, Echo, the bat. Alright. Uh, what did, what are you other two doing? I'm not gonna wait. I was gonna say, would that be an advantage, though, because he's at a... because he's a bat, or...? I'm looking. I was actually looking for that. Uh, can't hearing? Actually, yes. Yes, it does. Yo! Hmm. 
Nope, still 17. Well, apparently I rolled a d29, but... <laughs> wow, d29, you still got better than d20. Still got a 5, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 17, is it? Alright. Uh, so, uh... Maul and Talon, what are you two doing? Are you two uh, also listening out? No, I'm just looking around. Trying to get a beverage. Okay, so you're not actually going to look around for any suspicious looking individuals. You're just checking out the, the place? Yeah. Okay. Well... I'm uh, looking for anyone shady in the place. Okay, roll me a, roll me a perception check. Ooh. Alright. Uh, you all begin to listen out and watch for any suspicious looking individuals or see if you can hear anything, uh, that seems smell anything. or smell anything abnormal. Uh, all right, let's see here. Huh? Uh, you did have advantage on that uh, smell, smell sniffy sniff, right? So it's a 16. Yes. Cool. Yes, Luxodons have a key bar, so they get advantage on a perception of anything dealing with the scent of smell. With the trunk. Does it make sense? Yes. You think they'd have King Herring as well? Yeah. Big ears. Big uh, ears. Alright, so with 16, uh, as you kind of sniff around uh, the area, you know, trying to smell anything that doesn't seem to uh, really come around from these, this area. Um, Um, you do get a a whiff of nothing like brimstone or hellfire or anything like that, but you get like a whiff of of uh, of manure, which mm. doesn't. Where you are is a little bit abnormal, given that you're kind of in the uh, the main city. But you know, maybe it's just someone who works out of stables somewhere. Uh, but that's really the only thing that smells too significantly different, as a lot of the smells you're smelling are alcohol, uh, smoke, as people are smoking in here, cigarettes, cigars, that kind of thing. Uh, and a lot of the people in here do seem to be a little bit of the walking class, so they have that that smell that lingers on them, as a lot of them seem to be here from uh, the recent jobs getting off. Um, but that's the one smell that kind of sticks out to you, and it is uh, located in kind of this direction. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, 17 for the bat. Uh, as the bat is listening out, uh, it, hear, it does hear like all of these conversations that are ongoing. The music is playing. Uh, so it's, it's kind of getting this influx of information as it's listening. Um, but as it is kind of taking in all of this information, it does hear something uh, of just the end bit of a conversation um, and it is having another meeting tonight just inside you know the place wait western side what? western side you know the place Um, and then another voice kind of kicks okay. in and goes, yeah, I hate that smell. Fucking animals. 
and then the kind of the conversation kind of ends there uh, for what the bat can hear and uh and echo ascertain what table this is coming from uh it seems to have come from this this area as well uh, and Talon, as you are kind of looking around, listening out, uh, you actually see uh, the, uh, the patrons who are kind of about. Uh, you see uh, two individuals who are currently drinking, uh, seem to have just finished up uh, or, or having a conversation. And you notice that uh, one of them, both of them, have this uh, glove over their their left hand. And, And just the left hand. And they are all, they are in the same vicinity you see them uh, in this chair right here. Well, not that chair, but at that seating. And Amal, you were trying to get a drink. You sit down, and uh, the uh, one of the three bartenders who is there, who appears to be this... Uh, <clears throat> a uh, bronze dragon ball dragon bone is currently handing out drinks and looks to you what can I get you today I would take an Earl Grey ah oh, tea have a well, we have some teas here uh, would you like it spiked is that a local term I don't believe so but perhaps fascinating then no very well Regular tea it is. And you walk over to the other side where there's actually a set of like teas and uh, coffees as well. And Paul's stops making it up. Letting it uh, steep. Whatever, whatever the term is. I don't know how to what tea terms. I just drink it. After a few <laughs> minutes he comes back and hands you the teas. Very well. Thank you. That'll be, that'll be one copper. Here you go, sir. Good How's time. business? Uh, uh, lively. It's a bit of downtime right now as work is just close to getting off. Usually the traffic comes in a little bit later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, what would you say is the every patron's typical response to finding unsavory be- beverages? Hypothetically, if you had to make an estimate, how many people here would be uh, horribly outraged if they found a dead rat in a cup? A dead rat in a cup? Yes. I don't know. I would say probably 90%, uh, assuming they aren't fond of rats. Interesting. Luckily, it's never happened here before. We we take good care to make sure we don't have any rodent infestations. I see, I see. Okay, okay. Now, next question. If nobody stops Amar, he's just going to keep roasting this guy with theoretical questions about uh, entertaining people and policies and you know what maybe no one does stop them that's fine um i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna stop him for a moment Nani? and uh i'm gonna stop him for a moment because i want to talk to the ask the bartender for a. Uh, I guess uh, would be considered like a Long Island, like iced tea, or or like a Long Island tea. So mine just slightly spiked. Ah, oh. well, no, 
and he'll go make another cup. A few minutes passes, it you know, finishes. And he makes it up and we'll go. walks back. <clears throat> That'll be two copper. I pay the man. Takes it, gives you a drink. Uh, excuse me. I think that was out of me, character. Just... Me that was out of character. I did, I, oh, okay. I, I, was, I was coughing. <laughs> she is going to take it in her trunk and just put it up to her mouth and starts to sip it ever so delicately. Mm. Like a lady. Like, like a lady, yes. A lady with a trunk. That's the one thing I don't understand. Why didn't they make the trunk a weapon? Makes no sense. Yeah, they actively say you can't, like, wield a weapon in it or something like that. Oh, I mean, just, you could just use it to just, just, like... Just smack somebody with it. I would say you could, but it would just do, like, a regular punch. Oh, yeah. So, like, a one point of damage kind of deal. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, if this place was lit on fire, how much of a survival rate do you give the patrons based on roots and accessibility and crowdage? Well, that depends on the time, but uh, we do have several uh, escape routes. We have the main entrance, and you'll point to the main entrance. We have an exit at the back, and you'll point back there. Uh, we have several windows, which are usually openable. Uh, fire is all a ready hazard, given the dry climate we live in. And they'll point the several fires. Uh, above, we have several windows, each made with ladders that go down. Uh, so you can escape from above if I absolutely have to. Uh, Casualties could always occur, given some circumstances, like a door may be jammed because someone didn't close it properly, or some scenario like that. But we are prepared for any sort of circumstances that may occur, due to uh, property laws and whatnot, as well as the safety for our patrons. I see, I see. Will you be willing to help me with an experiment, sir? Go on. There's one of the experiment. Well, I would like to do an informal uh, screening on local customers to determine political and religious affiliations. Mm. All I would need is permission. And a... Uh, Alright, this is Mars again. What's that thing called where people in the Middle Ages had basically a clipboard to write on, but it all it had to hold was a candle to help them write in the dark? I, I no think it was idea. a sextant? No, that's sextant? probably something else. No, that's the little, the little, like, drawing triangle thing, I think, that has, like, a pencil that went in. I think anyway. it's a sextant. That well, I don't know its exact name, but I essentially want... Actually, you know what? Here, easy. All I would need is your permission and to borrow one of your smaller drinking trays. So, you'd, you'd like to do a religious survey of our patrons? Is that religious you know? and political. Oh, and political. Uh, well... People are fairly drunk, so I suppose they wouldn't care too much about talking about politics. A lot of them like to talk about politics when they're drunk, so I suppose it wouldn't be too much trouble. <laughs> as long as it doesn't cause any trouble, if you can promise me that, 
I can promise you I have never intentionally caused trouble in my life. And before he has a chance to reply, I take a tray and leave. I I watch him walk away. And then I look back at the bartender and I'm like... Uh... Was, uh keep an eye out for that one. Yeah, he's a... Uh, he's an interesting gentleman. Talks a lot. Mm hmm. Goes back to solving drinks. I go back to drink my drink. So, Olmec's gonna walk out of town and be like, uh, I do believe the uh, bat that I summon has uh, hurt some individuals that are somewhat suspicious. Speaking of meeting up somewhere, um, in the western side of town somewhere that smells bad I'm going to motion over towards the general area with my, my head subtly as to where about those guys are sitting assuming they can't like see me hey So how do you want to do this? We could interrogate them here. Mm. Or once they leave, perhaps follow. Or we could attempt to track them through other means. This isn't exactly the best place for roughing people up. Too many eyes. Well, that's the option of tracking them uh, after they leave. Perhaps engage them immediately outside or in a dark alleyway after some point and appropriately interrogating them. <laughs> that does sound like an option. Are they are they next are, are they next uh next to me? Or they are at a completely different area of the bar? Uh who? Um the two that are talking right now. Oh. Uh no, they are. I'm assuming they are where they actually are, which is over here. And you're over here. Oh. I'm gonna take my drink. I'm gonna walk over, walk over to them, I pretty much tell them what I smell, I said someone over there has been near a stable or something, to say reek of manure. Olmec nods, it appears to check out. don't know exactly who, but they do reek of it. So, if any of our uh, suspected suspected uh, individuals well, Olmec will relay the information him and Talon just went over for the sake of brevity. Just kind of, kind of let them know we just kind of figured out what we were just talking about with these f fucking dudes. Hmm. They may be the ones I might be smelling. I can use my scent, my keen smell. I might be able to, I guess, be like a, uh, I guess you would say a bloodhound? And all in with my smell? Or with my trunk? Just an option. Uh. So the one that was. Uh, the one in charge. Have I figured out exactly 
which which table it is now with uh, us putting all our, our heads together, uh, DM? Um, I would say so. I have my bat fly overhead on top of these one of these dudes and poop on them, so they smell like bat doo doo. Okay, uh, do you have your bat fly over there stealthily, or just blatantly flying over there? And just this point, it's, it, it, it's, you know, it's like one of those, you know, drive-by shootings. Oh, okay, so like, dry, you know flying saying? by, and while it's flying overhead, just... Yeah, you know, the, the old, like, you know, the, the World War Two style. The regular you know, pigeon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna say roll an attack roll for pigeon, uh, not pigeon, for a uh, bat poo, bat guana. So uh, uh, we, we can make it dexterity for, you know, because it's a projectile. Should I just use his bite attack? Uh, does it use dexterity for its bite? Uh, Maybe you're using I don't know. Probably, I would most unless it has a negative, in which case it probably isn't. I'll I'll roll with a D two uh, with a plus two. Yeah, I'll just roll with a plus two. Twelve. Yeah, it's using yeah it's giving it a negative for its bite because it's well it's giving it a zero because uh, it's using its strength for its bite. Ah well. Yeah. Uh, I got twelve. Twelve. I'd say that works. Yeah. So uh, your bat flies from the rafter that it was sitting on, and flies over this one of this uh, table these two individuals are sitting and, and a splat of bat guano lands on his shoulder he no, <laughs> oh, fucking burn. inside I'm inside <laughs> well I guess you could say that fifth attack was shitty oh shut up and he Stands up, uh, I'm gonna wash the shit off. And he begins to make his way uh, towards you all and uh, into uh, this room. We're all out here doing our counter terrorist plans by a bathroom. Pretty like much, kids. yeah, just by one of the restrooms. <laughs> Like three kids in high school trying to smoke in the bathroom and talk about how they hate the system. Uh,. Yeah, so he, he walks in there. <laughs> Excuse me. Goes and closes the door. Mm. Well, just sip my drink. And, and I'm just, I'm just going to turn to Talon and uh, Sufia here. And I'm just going to be like, Excuse me. And I'm going to turn to a fucking spider. And I'm going to crawl inside of this door. Under the door. Into the bathroom with this dude. Hold on. We got we to gotta do the thing. We got to do the thing. Beast War. Beast War. All right, I don't have uh, a sound effect. Uh, are you trying to be like stealthy when you turn into a spider? Because you are in a pretty occupied room at the moment. Yeah. I, I'm just kind of, you know, just kind of, you know, hanging out by the bathroom door and just, zoop. I'm a spider now, you know? Okay, so you're just going to blatantly turn into a spider. Somewhat, but can I try to be subtle about it where, like no one right. can see me? Alright, so try to be subtle about it. Alright, roll a stealth check to, you know, try and break most line of visions before you turn into a spider. Can I assist? Yeah, you can, you can help. You can, like, try to block it or, you know, act, act normal. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna help. Okay, 18. 18! Right, Let's go! 18. Uh, you, you act casual, uh, kind of laying against the, you know, the wall, kind of behind your, your fellow party members and shift into this spiral, this little mechanical spiral. Uh, that's now sitting on the floor, and you make your way into the bathroom where you see the uh, the man that your bat just pooped on. 
above the wash basin, kind of trying to scrub off this bat guana before it dries and stains. Okay, so I'm gonna just roll up on him. And I'm gonna try and give him that spider bite first. I'm gonna give him that nip. Just to get just to get going. So he's just like ah Uh I should pull in a normal ass spider here real quick. Yeah. So I can just use this my it's thing of bobs. Yeah, I got it up. Alright, so uh, you wanna Oh, okay, you, you have the token. Cool. Arachnophobia warning for anyone who doesn't like spiders, I suppose. Uh, there's a 13. Sorry, Scott. Uh, let's see. And, and is it an advantage because he's not expecting it? Uh. uh advantage, no, because it would be more like a surprise round, basically. Alright. Uh, so not advantage, but you would basically just get this as a freebie. Because uh, he is uh, not expecting it at all. Uh, all right. So let's see here. Actually need to... Uh, he's not wearing like any armor or anything. So yeah, so you can uh, just kind of crawl up on his foot. Kind of get squeeze up under his pants leg and get in. Uh, to well the, uh, the exposed skin in and chomp and stab. Alright, and he has to make a DC 9 constitution saving throw. He takes an extra 4 damage. Alright. It's actually a lot of damage for, like, a spider. Right? A very v venomous spider. Like, it's this like is shit. just like a little house spider. It wouldn't be that bad, but this is like a a very deadly spider. Let me have a drink. Okay. Uh, the Constitution. I've been putting fucking dots in this check. Ah, oh, that's a natural one. Okay. All right. Uh, he, f you bite down, and your venom uh, is sent into uh, his leg uh, and he goes ah fucking hell and he goes to slap his leg where you are uh, so let's see here because uh, it didn't kill him he's he's still good oh I'm, I'm sure uh, so uh, what's I'm not going to bother doing like a whole uh, fucking Initial revolt here. So, uh, roll, just roll me a 1d20 and I'll roll pleasure of dexterity as a spider. This will be like the mini initiative to see if he can slap you before you can react. Uh, he's got 14 dex, I think. So, I think it's plus two, but. Uh, you can always just roll the dex check and then will basically do the same way. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, well, that's 12. Uh, as the okay, original d20. Okay, I think it'd be like 14 total. So yeah, yeah go he ahead. Got, he got 16. So he's gonna go and try to slap you off. So I'll just try the spot. Uh, so. Mm. Yeah. Spider bite. Spider bite. 15. I'm pretty sure that beats the spiders. They say that that barely hits me. Yeah, because it's like a they AC bonus. bonus. Yeah, because you AC All right. bonus. So that turns me. Back into my Warforge form. Uh, well, it does one point of damage. Okay, you have one. You have one HP because you're a spider. Yeah. And how much damage does it uh, do total? Because I do get carryover damage. It just does, it just does one. It's just a little slap. It's like a. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So he slaps his leg, and you bust out under his pants, and you actually rip off like his pants leg as you kind of expand it back into your Warforge form. Holy shit! And then with that, I'm gonna try and knock his ass out with Shillelagh. All right, yep. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna try and blah. All right, go for it. <laughs> Hello. Uh, this is going to plan. It might. Uh, 
Yeah, so, uh, roll to attack. Did that actually add the proper bonus? It did not, but that's okay. Uh, it, I didn't, can't. it didn't roll anything, at least not that I'm saying. Uh, 1, 20 plus 27 with a nat, a nat 20. 20. Uh, yeah, so, uh, roll. Um, roll the D8. Bam. Push that was. Because I believe it adds wisdom to it. Uh, it, it, it is. It is my wisdom with Shillelagh. It's two D. Uh, or do you do for critical double so dice yeah. or? Uh, double dice. Yeah. Like, I mean, double, yeah, yeah. Two so D eight. Okay. So it'll be two D eight plus your wisdom. Wow, oh, first twenty of the game. How much did you do it earlier? For ten damage. That's addition to the damage you took before. Hopefully, I just you conked his ass did out. Did fifth. You did five earlier. So that's fifteen total. Double check. Because I don't have any token for me. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Uh, and you all just trying to knock him out, right? Yeah, I'm trying to knock him the fuck out. Just kunk. Uh. I don't think spells you can actually do that. Because you're actually using Shalala. Shillelagh would be a melee spell attack. Yeah, it's a spell attack. I don't think you can Which actually... Which gets... You can definitely crit. Well, yeah, you can crit, but I don't think you can choose non-lethal for the spell is what I'm getting at. I think it automatically kills no matter what. You can choose non-lethal with, like, a, a melee weapon. Mm. I don't know if you can with a spell. So, that's kind of what I'm getting at you. Well, Which we could let's... say, well, then you didn't Shillelagh and you just did it normally. Which Hold on a second. Enough, but I'm not actually... So Let's it's see. it's a weapon attack, because you cast the spell as a bonus action, then use your action to make a weapon attack with the magical weapon. Okay, I, I could. Would have. So uh, that that works uh, for the duration. You can use your spellcasting ability instead of a strength for attack throws for the uh, melee attacks using that weapon. The weapon also becomes magical, and if it isn't already, is, but is, no, you know what? I I, I can actually see it for stuff like this where it's like it's technically the weapon you're using a spell to imbue the weapon and make it magical but the spell is i, I don't know. it's weird middle ground but i i i can kind of see it being argued that way so yeah i i love that yeah sure you can knock him out knock him over the head of the stick yeah yeah you know what i i i the argument is sound i could see um. it being argued either way but i think it's fine so you what you've the managed to like just knock him upside the head, uh, and he kind of passes out his eyes roll back and falls onto the ground. I'm, I'm gonna just open up the door, crack, and just be like, "All right, guys, come on in." I'm just gonna wave him in. Talent's right there, so come on in. Okay. Oh. We're, we're, we're having a bathroom party with, uh. with Homie. Don't look like this. This is, the, this is the, not the women's room. I, 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 there's enough room to, like, squeeze in. You'll be tightly squeezed, but there's, there's enough room to, like, squeeze in. This big box of locks that I'm just. Oh yeah, it's it's not comfortable by any means, but you could I'm, like all fit in. I could stay on the fucking toilet. I, I'm fine. Doing hey, Mark, what are you doing during this entire time? <laughs> as, as... Oh, I'm just starting a survey. Oh, okay, I have a, I have a scholar's robe and a clipboard. Mm -hmm. So essentially, I'm a scientist with a clipboard. I can do anything, and no one could stop me. Yeah, that's how that works. You can get away with anything if you have a lab coat and a clipboard. What? Sure, why not? Out. During this whole process, you saw a man get shit on by a bad knee, stormed off, and you know. Now, now hey, you man. see your other apartment criminals going into a bathroom that he just went into. Yes, I'm sure they'll tell me about their experiment, or they won't. We'll see. They have their experiment. I have mine. Exactly. We're There's compelled another experiment. Like We're all contributing to science, and that's all that matters. I'm contributing to something. Bathrooms must be made bigger. 
Ooh, All right. social reforms. Interesting. So, once I get... Uh, is Talon coming to the bathroom as well? How many people were here? Two. Right. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, are, you looking, uh, yeah. are you looking at that table? Yeah. Yeah, they're looking at you. And they're having... I have some questions. As just the one guy left. Yeah, just the one guy's left. He's he's watching and he's curious as to why uh, an elephant woman just went into the man's bathroom where his friend was at. But you know, because he he didn't see the spider go in and then poof back into a regular guy. Oh, a robot yeah. man. <laughs> So I, I, I'm gonna turn to Su Sufia and I'm be like, "Hey, so you got any ideas on how to get this guy out of here, or you know, come yeah. for information?" Let's see. I'm gonna go over to the other guy. <laughs> Don't really have any spells for like. No, I'm running, I'm running through my stuff. It's like, not really. I mean. Alright. So here's what I we could, could do in that case. Oh. I mean, I'm a I'm a woman. In in the men's room right now, so take that whatever you want. I mean. Alright. So. I'm gonna need you to give some sort of distraction for me while I uh, extract this guy from this uh, particular building. And I'm gonna cast Pass Without a Trace on myself. Okay. And this unconscious ass dude. Hmm. Oh. And while you do that, you can also select uh, other individuals and then... Actually, does it matter if they start in it? I don't think it does. I think they just have to be in range and then you're uh, like, hey, now you have it. Yeah, so anyone within 30 feet of me that I choose gets it. Yeah. So you can choose the, choose the guy that's now unconscious. No, yeah, as long as I want to have it, he has it. As long as you move in that range. But right now, I need a distraction. Uh, uh, I don't check my spells. Um, it's one of those things where I don't entirely remember if it's you have to choose who can get it when you cast a spell or if it can happen later. Uh, specific, specifically, it's for the duration. Each yeah. creature you choose within 30 feet of you, including you, has a plus 10 bonus to dexterity yeah. checks. Yeah, but what I'm saying is I don't remember what the uh, saying is if... When it says stuff like that, if it's... When someone new comes in who wasn't there before, if you can then be saying, now you have the bonus if they make a stealth check, or if they get in... After the initial casting, if they can never get it, I can't ever remember what the original intent is behind that. But I usually go with the you can just choose even after the initial casting. That's usually what I kind of go back on. I don't know if that's the correct way of doing it, but that's always what I go back to. Alright, I'm just going to walk out gonna walk okay. out of this bathroom and I'm going to cast Mage Hand. Okay, you woke back up. Uh, uh Talon, what were you uh what were you doing? Now that you've walked over to the table with the other individual. Cause all this has happened simultaneously. Right. Evening, sir. Morning. 
evening, afternoon. Getting close to night. Yeah, whatever. So, uh, your friend seems like he's taken a while to get back. Eh, he had a weird bird shed on him. So, I take a little bit of you longer than usual. Yeah, I'd bet. Seems to have some kind of nice lady friend in there with him. She's out now, though, so. Suppose that wasn't very long. Happy <laughs> ending, though, I hope. We could only hope. <laughs> So, is there anybody? Is there anybody over here that looks like it's about to take a seat? Uh, about to take a seat? Uh, roll up a seven chair. All right, I will dive with that. Oh, I got a seventeen. Uh, that looks like there was there was a guy who was about to who's came back with like a few drinks for him and his buddies and was about to pull out a chair and sit down. I think I found my distraction. I'm going to take, as he's about to sit in the chair, I'm going to use my mage hand to carefully and stealthily pull the chair from out from under him. Okay. Uh, you uh, stealthily, let's see, uh, roll, roll a sleight of hand trick. Sleight of hand. Sixteen. Sixteen. Alright, uh, you kind of... Uh, manipulate your mage hand to just float over. It grabs onto one of the chair legs and just as the guy has finished pulling out the drinks he's about to sit down with his own he falls on his ass onto the floor. And everyone at the table just kind of points and laughs at him. And, uh, I, that, that I come the door. I'm knocking the door. Says, go now. 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 Uh, and indeed I am going to guidance myself mm -hmm. and then Attempt that sneak with that sick ass plus ten bonus from my uh, from my, my spell. Is. So let's see. That's going to be a d twenty plus, 10, plus, a plus d4. twelve plus a d four. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, while you're doing that, uh, tell them uh, uh, what else were you doing? Thirty two. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> I just drag this guy into another fucking dimension as I sneak out this front door. Yep, uh, you you take the guy. You're now composed in shadow, uh, and as a good portion of the uh, establishment is kind of looking at this guy, uh, you kind of just sneak out the front door. Uh, I'm just, I'm just dragging him to a back alley. Oh. And, and, uh, and uh, I'm just gonna uh, stash him somewhere, tie him up, gag him, get him nice and wrapped up. I got plenty of rope and materials for that in my, my, my pack, so, you know. Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. You find, you go to one of the back alleys, you can go ahead and move yourself to whichever one, it doesn't matter, uh, and begin tying this guy up. So, uh, Talon, uh, you, you're still talking to this guy? Yeah. Okay, go for it. So, hear about anything strange lately? Uh, not really. Uh, uh -oh. Well, other than uh, upside down birds. That's a little weird. <laughs> I'm gonna get a refill. Just making pleasant conversation.
It'd be wise of you to be straight with me. All right. I've been dealing with some weird shit today, and I'm not in the mood. That's unfortunate to hear. It most certainly is. Well, I'll just ask again. You heard any about anything interesting lately? About some folks smell of fire and brimstone? Well, there is one guy who smells a little bit like a fire. Look at Adam. <laughs> Besides him. <laughs> Any others? Can't say I do. Not too sure what you're trying to get at. Not too sure how that's my problem. Uh. Hmm. Um... What you thinking in the I'd like to intimidate him, but I'm trying to figure out how. <laughs> I know. I will, I'm gonna go ahead and get, get a refill. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can call the bartender over for another uh, iced tea. Mm-hmm. Uh, he obliges. Ask for you for two more couple. Hey, the man. And I sip at it again. All right. Well, right. while you're while you're thinking about what you want to do, uh, come on. How's your how's your survey going? Uh, you know. I'm uh, getting some of the answers I expected, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, 
wondering how satisfied most of the people are with their current state of government and theocracy. A few of them are okay with it. Some of them are a little bit more uh, downtrot than others. Well, that's useful data for the ga- figuring out who's actually doing what. Who's the cultist? <laughs> ah, I wonder who. <laughs> we'll find out. It takes time. These things take time. You know, if you rush the scientific process, you make mistakes. True. Like, who would just rush these things? Absurd. If you think i finished, you can tell me, but I'm just gonna do this until I get everybody. I... I finished my drink. I finished my drink. I'm gonna sit down. And... I'm gonna go outside and see if the Warforge is needing assistance. See, see if you can find the man with a 32 stealth check. Well, actually, I was going to say, uh, if he's leaving, I'm going to have Echo the Bat follow him out and just kind of circle around and kind of like, lead him to me. Oh, okay, so once once everyone follows you out, if they follow you out, uh, you're going to try and get them to follow the bat? Just follow just- the bat. Just follow the bot. Yeah, you know. Bat a little circle on the head and... You know? <laughs> leading to my, my, my dark alleyway. Where I got this dude just kind of... Kind of... I put a placeholder token for him. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> noob. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, so, uh, are, are you... Alright. So I'm like, hello there. We have our, uh, interrogation subject. Hmm. I think I might be able to help with this. Uh. Let me ask this real quick, though. Um, uh, the arcane armor, does it work for scale mail? Oh, you're asking me? I'm I'm asking the dungeon master. Uh, let me double check. Hold on, I'll be right back. What's it called again? Okay, no. I'm getting an ad. That's not what I want. Is that classes? Not backgrounds? Oh, I'm hungry. Any kind of armor. Yep, suit of armor you're wearing. Just says armor. Don't specify any kinds. Yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't specify any kind of armor. It just says armor. Hmm. So it could be any kind. Uh, awesome. I am going to look at the Warforge, place my hand on my chest, and all of a sudden, the Warforge sees a glow, and my simple, uh, uh my cloak and my leggings and my, and my, uh, gloves become more metallic. And it looks like just like uh, like like dragon scales, kind of, not exactly, but kind of. As she activates her arcane armor, I'm 
all mech uh, thinks this is cool. Say what? I said all mech thinks this is cool. <laughs> I, however... That was just a joke. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> uh, um, we should secure the... And then hold now. my hands up. I then hold my hands up and my gloves begin to spark ele electric arcane energy. Ah. Excellent. Is it, shall we just do it here then? I said we get him awake first, then we can see what we can do. No, oh, not a problem. Uh, I've got to cast Goodberry. Create ten good berries, and I'm gonna pop one of those good berries in this fool's mouth to heal him for one HP and restore him to consciousness. Well, he. Uh, he... How does that actually work? Because he technically has one HP, he's just unconscious. So I don't know if actually gaining HP will wake him up. I don't think so. Gotta be honest with you, I never had this come up. <clears throat> Most people just kill them. I've asked myself this question once before and I never actually looked that answer up to it. I suppose it does, but yeah. Alright, so any creature that is unconscious or at zero hit points immediately becomes conscious again upon receiving magical healing. Oh, well, that's the answer. Yeah, that'll do it. So, I'm, I'm waking this fool up. Yep, you, you shove the... <clears throat> you shove the good berry into his mouth and... Chew it up for him. And do, do the little throat rub yeah, so it goes the, down. The throat rub. And he slowly starts to blink and regain consciousness. It, immediately replacing the gag, though. Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. Like, of course. Like, Hello, Fleshly. I'd like to introduce you to my associate here. Now, you're going to quietly answer some questions for us, or my associate is going to... Uh, would you care to give a, a, a visual demonstration, my friend? Sure. Uh, is there like a box or anything uh, nearby that Presumably I can hit? The I mean, you could even just make your gloves spark like a motherfucker, I would guess. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit them together, and I'm gonna ca cause a concussive, uh, like a small concussive shockwave of thunder, thunder arcane energy. So as you can see, this will be a uh, quite an unpleasant experience for you if you cause us any uh, gotta pat him. problems. Do you understand, fleshly? All right, uh, roll me an intel uh, intel intimidation check. Uh, Both of us or one of us? Uh, That's a good question. I, at the very least, one of us is assisting. Yeah, I... I Who's got the higher... I, I would say it would be uh, o, uh, Omac, because you're the one actually talking. Okay. For the most part. Uh, and I, I would then say I will, it would be I will advantage. Because that would be working as like the help action. Sufia. Mm, okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, twenty. All right. Um, as as uh, you speak, and Sufia uh, does the small concussive blast that kind of uh, makes probably a little bit more noise than you actually like. Uh, the the man kind of narrows his eyes and then they kind of open up wide when the blast happens. Alright. So, having made that intimidation check, I am also want to make a quick investigation check and just see if I can, like, pat him down, see if he's got any sort of, you know, amulets, religious insignia, anything he's got yeah. on him. Okay, uh, make an investigation check. Uh, 19. Alright, 
cool. What you got? Alright. Uh, I'm actually going to... I'm going to say we're going to take like a quick 15 or so minute break because the dogs are whining at me to go out. So if everyone's okay Alright! I'm fine. We'll take a quick 15 minute break. We'll come back. We'll finish this up. Uh, while I do that. So, yeah. So go ahead. Take a quick 15 minutes. Okay. All right, chat. Uh, well, how's we'll everyone doing so far? A quick 15. Uh, how's so far doing? I'm gonna take a quick 15 minute break. Why? Let to let me take the dogs out. Pretty much. So, uh, don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back.
Yo. I'm here. Yep. I'm back. Sorry, oh. I was uh, just napping. It is nine o'clock for me. What's up? He's asking. No, not really. It's like ten o'clock p.m. for me. Same. Hey. Not we good. Let's go. I I will say I probably can't go past eleven. I work early mornings. Okay. I yeah. I, I, an hour. An hour. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's happening? No, <laughs> no. Oh, so let's go now. So, uh, number one, what did I find on this dude? That's the, and I did my investigation check. That's the wrong thing. Yes. Okay, so, uh, with your investigation check, you find uh, several things as you rifle through his pockets and all that good stuff. Uh, you find about three gold total currency on him. Uh, most of it is in uh, uh, copper and silver. Okay. But you can just say three gold because no. it makes it easier. Uh, you find uh, uh, n nothing really of more value of like he has like a couple of cards from like businesses, like business cards from like several businesses he's like found that they've like just handed to him, like come to our business, that kind of. Uh, uh, he's got lint. Uh, He's got a set of keys. Taking uh, those. Uh, and uh, as you kind of like go through his things, uh, you notice that well, this one glove is on his hand. Uh, that since you've kind of like tied him up, has kind of like uh, the glove has kind of pulled itself up ever so slightly. And you see that his hand or like the his wrist that is that is visible is uh, slightly blackened. My right, God, taking off that glove and see what the fuck's going on with that. Right, uh, you, you take off the glove uh, and you see that his hand is, for the most part, uh, getting to like a black coloration. Um, like, like we're talking like necromantic black. It's 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 not like a. Like a, 
uh, almost like a charcoal kind of black, but uh, a purplish at the fingertips. Uh, it doesn't look. Make me a medicine check. Make me a medicine check. I can make a medicine check. Yeah, make a medicine check. <laughs> Eight. Yeah, not much more than that. Uh, the hand is like a blackened color. Uh, more purple, purple, that, 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 purple at the fingertips, and for the most part, it's still fairly, you know, uh, like flesh colored, like color of his skin. Uh, but uh, the uh, his hand is taking on like a black appearance. Nothing like immediate, like it's not changing as we speak, but it looks like it's in the process of leaving that flesh coloration and going into this dark black. So as I slowly remove the the gag, say, now, now, fleshly, remember to be quiet, or else it'll end poorly for you. Pull the gag. And, uh, so I'll turn to, uh, Sufia, I'm like, would you care to do the honors? Mm. 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 So uh, I'm basically asking if you want to start the question because I don't want to do all the talking and, and hog all the time. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. Let's start off with the basics. What is the name of your cult? That you, what is the name of the cult that you work for? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm slowly removing the gag as yeah, let's as I said the that. <laughs> they call themselves Black Hand. Well, there we go. That's self-explanatory. Yeah, you know, you know, you know maybe, maybe yeah. should have connected the two things. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. We know that you're going to have a meeting tonight. Tell us where is this western side, or was it western side? Is that western side is on the western side. Western location, oh. uh, western location. You said, yeah. Okay. Um, where at on the western side? Stable. Just on the edge of town. What street? Sand dust. Sand dust. All right. I feel bad because I'm asking the DM for a name. It's always a pain. How dare you? <laughs> now, how many? How many of this? Uh, how many are in your group? Shall we say? Hundreds. Less, more, maybe fifteen. Look at guys, really. Just trying to make a living. You don't have nobody. Well, you see, we're after a we're after a cult. We have been tasked to find and take care of a cult. We ain't a cult. Yeah. Just a group of guys. Group of guys with bad hands. You know, just group guys with bad hands. This, yeah, the main members may do some weird stuff, but they 
they pay us decent money, and when we meet up. Anything having to do with demons? Uh, I don't know anything about any demons. What kind of weird stuff? Yeah, he kind of shows you his hand. He, it's a symbol. They touch your hand and it gets really cold. And it turns like this. After so long. Can't really feel anything out of it after a while. Hmm. I mean, there's no oaths or swearing fealty to any particular entities or... I mean, we all have to swear on oath that we won't, you know, go telling anyone that we do this, but I don't really think I have much of a choice here, not do it. Fucking dogs. Anyway. <laughs> no puppies. It's not, it's the not wild the dogs from earlier startled the end. Yeah, yeah, the wild dogs, the wild... Mutt Somalia will come running back to save this man and kill all of you. They were the demons all along! <laughs> they were hellhounds. Oh. Anywho. Now there's 15 of you. Pretty, pretty much a mock of the black hand. What else do we need to know from them? Oh because. yes. What? Oh yes. Who is your leader? Omak. Oh, Omak oh, Gonstein. He organizes the meetings. So Umark? How how does that how's that spell? Uh, you, Mark, M O R K. Oh, you, Mark. Well, pronounced U Mark, but yeah. U Mark, U Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. So, um, let's see. Not who you guys are. We know the name of the cult. We know the name of their leader. Has How this Umak they... Has this Umak displayed any sort of magical aptitude or capabilities? By what means does he mark your hands, for example? I don't know much about magic. He's... He just seems like a regular guy to me. He wasn't even the one who did it. He just sets up the meetings. Okay. Then who was the one that gave you the black hand? I, was, I don't... Never saw their face. They kept it all covered. They carried a blue staff. Yeah, Does, the blue staff that first day. Does the blue staff have a name? Don't know. Probably. But not one that you know of. Not that I know of. Hmm. Well, well, Omak, do you think that we got enough information from this man? Perhaps for now, but I believe he may have more information that may be useful later. Perhaps we should drop him off with the bishop for additional interrogation and safekeeping. I'd say quite right. But, oh, come on, I ain't holding nobody. Just let me go. Come on. I only got one good hand. Well, the alternative yeah. is that I have a large number of spiders crawl into your mouth and eat you from the inside out. 
But it's your choice. <laughs> you went to that, right? <laughs> I'm, a good, I'm a good guy. I'm a stand-up citizen. I pay my taxes like everybody else. Uh, Fine. Damn, just, you time me, let me go, you'll never see me again. And let's be honest, Fleshly. In the scope of things, you're going to die relatively soon anyway. In fact, Rather in a generation sooner. or two, probably won't even be anyone who will remember your face. No. I'm going to pat him on the shoulder. What will it be, breather? Spiders? Or a stay with a kind priest? The choice is yours. If you've done nothing wrong, then you have nothing to. Fine. Okay, then we pick him up, and we take him back to the. Uh... Regagging him first. Oh yes, let's re let's regag him. We we just kidnapping this motherfucker. She's. He's ours now. <laughs> we're, we're take him back to the bishop. Tell him the bishop he's one of the cultists and like lock him up somewhere, you know. You got a courthouse in there. I'm sure you guys got some cells or some shit to, to house some prisoners and shit. Throw him in there. Put this guy in holding. Wonderful question. <laughs> Tell the information that we got. What is this? What is this? Is this here that's in town? It's a little map token. What the hell? No. Nope. Uh, presumably one of us would, you know, hop back into the tavern and be like, yo, we're, we got this dude. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm, I'm gonna hop back in the tavern. I'm gonna hop back. Alright. Uh, uh, Will, was there anything we? else you wanted to try and do with that guy? Uh... Before, before they finish up and get it back in here. Yeah, he's gonna... He's gonna channel this. <laughs> and, uh... Last chance. The guy, like, puts up his head. Hey, look, hey. I don't want no, uh... I, I don't want any trouble. Ain't got nothing against uh, uh, Gnasi. Yeah. Look, I'll just, I'll just get up. Get up. I'll be on my way. Would you take my drink? You can oh. have it. And he begins to scoot out of his chair. You gonna let him go? Uh... I'm gonna... just... Punch him unconscious. <laughs> Try to keep it subtle while he's still in the booth. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if there's much subtlety of a knocking a man unconscious in an open ball. At this point, he's he's done. <laughs> All right, uh, roll roll to attack, see. If You're a plus seven to punch? <laughs> oh, that's right. You're a fucking monk. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just dragging this dude to the temple. Assuming they'll meet me on the way. Or there. Yeah, so you just... Uh, uh, punch out. Uh, roll, roll damage. Punch out. Jesus. <laughs> uh, you... Punch him directly in the in the temple, and you 
clock him out. Just and he just falls back into the uh, the booth, and a few people have kind of taken notice, and the the main bartender kind of goes, "Hey, hey, take bar fights outside." This is a fine establishment. I don't want anything getting messed up. Take it outside. Oh, most certainly. And he's going to pick him up. Pick him up. You, we're not finished here. Shakes, he's still unconscious. Takes him outside. (laughs) All right. uh, You pick the unconscious man up. Excuse me. This man was too drunk. He needed to be taken to the drink tank. (laughs) Fuck <laughs> on <Pod. laughs> Alright, you, you now have an unconscious man. Excellent. Right. Nice. Let's take him back to the temple. I'll go get I'll go get the other guy. Yeah, this time uh uh you you come in. Uh, you you see him with this other unconscious fellow and your other compatriot who has been doing uh, surveys this entire time. Oh, hello. Amazing news. Hello? It's a survey. It's almost done. Well, finish it up Finish it up quickly. We got what we came for. We're about, we're about to head back to the temple. But, but statistics. Yes, the statistics are all really good, but remember, we have a job to do. Eh, okay. I suppose. While I have you, what would you say your current feeling about the feudal system is? Oh, uh, my opinion on it? Yes. Say, from what I've seen, it's okay. I mean, some of the punishments may be a little steep, but I'm a firm believer of following the rules. All right. Much like somebody doing a driver's test, he doesn't comment on that, but makes a note in his note in his clipboard. His his clipboard being a a drink tray that he took from the bar. Yes, of course, professional. Yes. Yeah. yeah so make sure, make sure you give that back. I don't think the bartender bartender would love to have his thing back. Oh, it's fine as long as I have the scholarly robe and this tray. I can get away with anything. I look it up and down at the tabaxi and just be like... They've already disregarded you after making that statement. Like, there is no point in continuing the conversation. I have said the fact. You have learned the lesson. All is well. And I'm just going to up the door. I must have an echo. Lead you guys back to me, so we can uh, <laughs> take our prisoners back to the temple. Go back to the temple. I feel like this is like that Metal Gear Solid run where you actually don't kill anybody. You use the tranquilizer gun on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I guess we're heading back to the temple. All right. You all leave the uh, inn and tavern and begin to make your way back to the Temple of Judgment with the two uh, individuals in tow. Uh, and that will be uh, what I call it tonight. And we will pick up at the temple next week. Alrighty. Great session. Yeah, so I all right. you all enjoyed uh, session one, the debut of World of Law. I had a blast. Uh, how about everyone else? I did. It was annoying. It was good. Was good. It was good. That was a hell of a punch. Yeah. (laughs) 
Was that max that... damage, by the way? Yes, it was. Amazing. I, I, I had to have been. That was like a fucking wham. Incredible. All right. Yep. So, uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, I enjoyed having you all. I think you all did great. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead, say your tokens, uh, just in case, and uh, disconnect so I can shut all this, shut all this good stuff down. Uh, and uh, I will see you all next week. Uh, if you have any questions you need to ask me, feel free to. You can always DM me. Uh, all right. And I'll answer as quickly as I can. So you don't have any questions now. Where do babies come from? Uh, well, when a mommy bird and a daddy bee love each other very much, uh, the daddy bee stings the mommy bird and then he dies. Uh, and then mommy bird gets a present called uh, an egg. Then the egg hatches into a uh, alimony. <laughs> what a majestic and complicated system. What a majestic creature. Quack. All right, All right so, well, uh, I'm off to yes. bed. See you all next week. Yes, good night, everyone. Right, bye -bye. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for joining me. And I will see you next all week. All times. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Good night. Good night. All righty. And thank you all for joining me. If you're watching on YouTube, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that little bell to be notified when I post again. And if you aren't doing so already, check me out on Twitch, Dungeons with Shepard. Link in the description below. And I will see you all next time.